All right, welcome to part four of my uh, examination of Karl Bau's creation in the 21st century. Uh, his episode called Fossils Galore, starring Ian Juby of the Canadian Cre Traveling Creation Museum, or whatever it's called. Uh, before I'm going to jump in, and I apologize in advance for the repetition, but I'm going to show uh, two of the clips that I showed in the last one um, because I think that this point needs to be emphasized a lot. The, the contradiction that he makes in this clip, um, I was really running short of time and I don't think I um, adequately got into it. So um, this next clip I'm going to show, which was from the last episode, over the last um, part, he's talking about this supposed death position that these dinosaur bones are found in. He also says Archaeopteryx. Um, you know, with the head bent back and the legs curled up. And then he shows that he went, to, he explains that he went to an ostrich farm because he heard that ostriches die in exactly the same way. Now the idea, of course, again, to emphasize, if he doesn't believe in any connection between dinosaurs and ostriches, it's, why would you think an ostrich would be a good model of how a dinosaur should look when it dies. Anyway, so here he makes this claim. Now, the reason I stopped at an ostrich ranch is because this may have a clue to why we find them like this. All right. I had been told that ostriches, when they die, their heads tilt back and their legs tuck up. So I stopped into this ostrich ranch and I specifically asked them. And the owner, who's been ranching ostriches since the late 80s at least, said, yes, it is true. Uh, you can often tell a chick is sick because its head will start to arch back. I see. But the moment they die, their head goes completely loose. And you will find them dead in any position. I specifically asked them on this. Okay. Now, so you guys got that, right? So, in other words, an ostrich that's dying throws its head back and... and tucks its legs in, throws its head back, and then dies, and then goes limp. Only if it were buried immediately, you know, in other words, if it were in the process of dying when it was buried by sediment, would it ever be preserved in that position? And of course, as he puts it, dinosaur bones are found extensively in that position. So therefore, proof that dinosaurs, like ostriches, were all caught in the process of dying. But then, now explaining this Albertosaurus skeleton, he says the following. Probably dying of asphyxiation. He was yes. arching back its head trying to get air, most likely. Okay, now, not, is the contradiction clear? Maybe it must, maybe it was, I'm just flogging a dead horse here, but, um, or dead Albertosaur? Anyway, so the ostriches, that's just sort of their natural death pose, according to, according to, um, Mr. Juby. In other words, when they're in the process of dying, their head just naturally throws itself back or in their legs tuck in. That's just, just what ostriches do, right? And assuming that's what dinosaurs do. Um, but that is not consistent with his statement just there that it's dying of asphyxiation as if it's in the water, lifting its head up, attempting to breathe. That's a completely different concept in why the neck is in that position. Do you, do you see what that would, how that would work? Um, and of course, the whole thing is is made pointless by the fact that I, I this this is a creation. This is not a new creationist claim. This has been made made previous. This has been made um, several times in the past. And what it uh, comes down to is you 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 look at the body of known dinosaur specimens that we have. You know, in other words, you know, where we where we have a fairly complete skeleton in preserved, you know, in place, and you take those and you select only those that all show a common position, ignoring the ones that are in other positions. Okay, you, do you sort of see? You're 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 not taking the ones where the heads flop forward and it's dead, or the ones where the heads flop sideways and it's dead, or the whatever the position happens to be. You only look at those examples where the head is pushed back. And then you're taking from that and drawing a general conclusion about how dinosaurs die, this death pose that he envisions, with no evidence to support that there is such a thing as a death pose. And then you make the claim that this, because of this death pose, they're now frozen in time, they, they all died in one gigantic, immediately buried catastrophe. It, it, it's really, really a terrible example, this post hoc reasoning, post hoc examination of, of evidence. Do me a favor and pass me that fossil Kichasaurus right there because I've got another one here. 
Now this comes from the Big Valley Creation Science Museum in Alberta, Canada. I've now gotten to study five different Kichasauruses. Notice the similarities. These are not the same fossil. But you notice the similarities? Yes. Even the marine reptiles, all five of them had their head bent to the side as far as possible. They are in Incredible. death throes. Death throes in the process of dying, but mm -hmm. they were caught and entombed mm -hmm. in the process of dying. Oh dear, there is a whole bunch wrong with what he just said there about the Kichasauruses. Uh, the first thing I want to point out is that the, key, the, the I don't know about the actual specimen. I can't see enough of the detail of it. Um, I don't know if it's a cast or, or, or what, or if it's an actual fossil or... Or what, I mean, it's, it, I can't see enough of it. But the one that he shows in the photograph the, from the museum is clearly a, one of the forgeries. The vast majority of Kichasaurus fossils are forgeries. Um, there's far, far, far more fake ones than there are real ones. Real ones, at least preserved by, with the whole animal, are relatively rare um, by comparison. And when they have sold, first of all, they're illegal to sell. Uh, it, they're part of the when they have been sold, it's from the Chinese black market, um, so it's they're not allowed to be sold in the first place. But more important than that, when they have sold, they're they're they've been in excess of of thousand dollars a piece, um, and I think up to five thousand for a big one. I think I saw back before it was banned, before their 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 export was completely banned. So the forgeries. Now I bought a forgery um, for I think it was fifty sixty dollars. And now I, and I, I, I was duped. I didn't know, um, which, and I don't, I don't feel bad. I mean, it was cheap. It, that's not much. And it's, it's still an impressive thing to show kids. It's, you know, and I, and I talk about it being a forgery or, you know, it's just like buying a cast in my opinion. It looks very similar to the originals, but you can always tell because the black, the bones on the forgeries are, are black, which they are in, sometimes in the real ones as well. But if you were to, if you take the matrix and you polish the matrix, it polishes to the exact same color texture. It's the same material as the, what the bones are made out of. The bones are just ca carved in relief and then polished. Um, and there's a couple of things like the pelvis looks really funky, things like that. So it's a forgery. So I wonder, my question would be if he examined five specimens of Kichasaurus. Now, in examining five specimens of Kichasaurus, right? How many of those were forgeries? Um, every one of the forgeries I've ever seen, the neck is bent at exactly that same angle. I think they use a common template and they, they do that. And it always has that same crack running through it, by the way. Um, how many of the ones that he looked at were forgeries? In which case, how can you draw any conclusion about how an animal typically is found its pose when dead based on a forgery? Uh, so, but I don't know the answer to that. But the other thing is, is that I did a just for just for sheeps and giggles. I did a Google image search for Kichasaurus fossil, and you can do this yourself. And it looks to be about two thirds of them or so have the neck bent in some direction, um, and about one third have the neck straight, which seems to be just about you know kind of right on with. There's a whole lot more ways to have your neck curved in terms of you know probability than there is to have it straight. Um, you know, it, it's not. I don't see any evidence of, of what did he say that they they were in death throes. That's what he kept saying. They're clearly death throes, which you would have to demonstrate. Now, this is not the same thing as you know the dinosaurs with the head bent backwards over the back. Now, this is you know, or, or the ostrich. So he's saying the using the same justification, the death throw, but this is bent to the side. So you would have to demonstrate that Lepidosaurians, with you know lizards and snakes, because these are actually not dinosaurs or birds, they're, 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 they're lipidosaurs, uh, same big infraclass that like the, the lizards and snakes belong to, the modern lizards and snakes belong to, these are just marine reptiles. Um, you would have to demonstrate that that group, when in its death throes, always curves its neck to the left or the right as far as it can, you see, even to begin to start to establish your claim that You've caught death. You, you've caught this thing in a sudden catastrophic burial event. You, you see, see the see the flaw with that? Yes, and some suggest this was from drying tendons. Well, there's a lack of consistency. It doesn't line up. No, you you can't move all of that uh, cover. Uh, no, overburden. Again, a big inconsistency here. I'm going to try to explain this. Um, 
So, evidence that these were buried under a catastrophic event, meaning, meaning I don't know, tons and tons of sediment fell upon them instantaneously before they even had time to go limp while in the midst of their death throes, right? That's, that's the claim that he's making. Um, now, the evidence of that is, is that the fossils are in their death throes. Now, he, people have tried to explain it away, saying that tendons drying tends to curl these things up. Um, that's a science called taphonomy, and, and, and by the way, we know that a lot of these things did dry before they were preserved, but that's a, an aside. Um, now, that's impossible, right? They couldn't have dried and curled. Why? Because how could something dry up and curl when it's got tons of sediment on top of it, right? How do we know it had tons of sediment on top of it? Well, the death row was preserved. See, it's... it. He's already assuming, he's, he's using the fact that they're in that position as proof that there was this overburden on them. And he's dismissing alternative theories of how the bodies got that way by already assuming that the overburden had to have been there. It's, um, well, it, it's pretty piss poor reasoning in my opinion. So I came home from work today and found out that I uh, found crayon marks all over the wall of my study. I, I think this is absolute definitive proof that lizard men from the planet Nibiru have come into my study with crayons and drawn on my wall. Well, isn't it possible that the crayon marks were done by, I don't know, a five-year-old with a crayon? Does that seem a lot more likely to you? Ha! A child did it. How could a child have done it? Because everybody knows that children are afraid of lizard men, so he wouldn't have even come in the office in the first place. Uh, a lot of these dinosaurs, for instance, the legs, are some are tucked up. The one beside it, some are not. Sometimes the arms are tucked up. Sometimes they are like this, as though they were attempting to swim out of mud or yes. something, buried in the process. So in other words, uh, Essentially, the prediction of this cataclysmic burial flood theory that he's trying to say, um, the prediction is, is that when we find fossils, well, we can find them in any possible position whatsoever, exactly the same as if they died, rotted to the bottom of a lake, or been washed down a river, or any other possible taphonomic, whatever happened to the body after death, all of that fits this flood model just as well because you know if they're if their heads bent backwards they're gasping for air if their legs are sticking out they're swimming through mud no matter what every little piece of evidence fits this theory so therefore you know what it explains absolutely nothing so uh, I noticed some special fossils oh, you noticed these, uh, in fact I was eyeing these because for years I've been trying to get uh, a fossil like this. Uh, tell me. Uh, well, here. What why, do you why don't you hold that one right there? Oh, I'll be glad to. Okay. <laughs> mm. These are uh, ammonites or yes. nautiloids, depending on on uh, the species and. All right, I'm going to finish up this part a little earlier. Uh, just wanted to introduce. He introduces ammonites, and he'll talk about ammonites for the next couple of clips. There. Um, I did want to point out. It does seem a little odd to me that uh, Carl Bau made the comment that he's been wanting to obtain these. Uh, and ammonites about that size, you can typically get, oh, I don't know, 20 bucks, maybe maybe up to 50, I don't know. They're not that much money for specimens that big, polished even, so it's a weird thing to say. That's that. Anyway, we'll go on. I'll see you in part five.